We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Hello students, uh, in the outbreak of the coronavirus, I advise you to stay at home and to be safe and uh, utilize the ICT technology for online learning and best of luck for your online learning. Okay, today I welcome you on the introduction of this multi-protocol label switching, which is also abbreviated as a MPLS. So before we move into this uh, introduction of the MPLS, first question is about why MPLS, why multi-protocol label switching? Here two words are very important that is label and switching. Already we know that the IP networks are everywhere in the world and it is one of the most popular network. However, there are certain disadvantages which IP networks suffer from. IP networks, first of all, cannot provide QoS commitments, that is the quality of service commitments, in true sense. You may ask why this is the reason. The reason is, <coughs> if you look at the TCP IP architecture, then at the network layer, we have the IP protocol, the internet protocol. And at the transport layer, we have the TCP and UDP. TCP is transmission control protocol and UDP is a user data control protocol. However, in our TCP IP architecture, network layer supports only connectionless services and that is what our IP protocol has been designed to support only connectionless services. Because of being connectionless, it does not have that much capacity to provide or we can say to commit all the quality of service parameters which normally ATM supports or ATM commits like the constant bitrate traffic, variable bitrate traffic, available bitrate traffic, unspecified bitrate traffic. So all such types of traffic uh, commitments are done by the ATM. However, IP networks cannot commit such kinds of quality of service. Still, IP networks has attempted to provide certain supports by having the type of service field in its IP header. If you look at the IP header and type of service field, so it supports uh, delay throughput and reliability kinds of mechanism. So this was the first, uh, first we can say very big uh, or we can say the disadvantage of this uh, IP networks about the quality of service parameters. But another uh, interesting bottleneck of the IP networks that is what the about is routing mechanism. So whenever packet which enters IP networks and which is uh, destined to some destination address it has to traverse the number of hopes. So already you know that hope count or time to life field in the IP header. So whenever such IP networks, or IP packets, sorry, there are some uh, this IP packets which traverse over the uh, various hopes, uh, every router has to perform certain tasks. So that is whenever packet or we can say whenever datagram packet arrives, the uh, router has to look uh, its network address or we can say it performs the masking it separates the network address and then it would search in its lookup table lookup table may be large wherever the routers which is almost uh, remain in the congested network traffic the, where the routing tables are or we can say router which is connected to many more networks and then after it finds out its output interface so finding the output interface simply it forwards that IP datagram to that uh, interface. Doing this task takes certain amount of time, how not uh, much more amount of time, but doing this task takes certain amount of time. That is where one is masking and then finding the entry in the uh, corresponding entry in the routing table. But however, when the packet has to traverse a long journey from source address to the destination address, 
if we accumulate all this time then this takes certain considerable amount of time so this makes the one of the another bottleneck in the ip network so what mpls is trying to offer us mpls imposes connection oriented framework on ip based networks and provides us the foundation for sophisticated and reliable quality of service traffic contract so this provides a very big and strong foundation over the ip networks and also it provides the bigger framework and then with mpls it is also possible to set up the routes on the basis of flow or we can say on the basis of individual flow so for an example if uh, we elaborate then between the two end points or we can say between the same two end points where two different applications are communicating two and two same end points in, in the sense my mean to say that is uh, uh, two same machines are communicating with each other but on this two machine there are two different applications so one application is uh, like a video conferencing and another application that is what we say is uh, email browsing so this two end points on the same machine would require or we can say demand different type of flow so if you look at the atm networks atm supports our constant bit rate traffic and which is the uh, the typical need of uh, video conferencing kinds of application while in email browsing there is nothing like uh, need like any available bitrate or unspecified bitrate can deal with this kinds of situation so if you look at in this aspect about the mpls then this video conferencing application which is something constant bitrate kinds of uh, application cbr traffic application then uh, all the packets destined to the source or we can say destination machine Uh, uh if it follows the same path that means the same routers across the network then there would be a more efficient or we can say more speed or we can say without jitter or with disturbance the uh, data can be delivered to the destination however the important thing about the same path exactly this does not happen in ip networks because ip network is on not on flow by flow basis ip networks is on packet by packet basis the meaning is when it is packet by packet that means uh, one packet may follow some x router and another packet may follow some y router however ultimately at the destination end all the packets are reassembled and would be uh, at the destination machine that means packet may take any route that is what the characteristics of the ip networks or packet networks while here flow by flow basis that means as per the requirement of the flow which is in the connection of the application would define its predefined path so predefined path so this is something like virtual circuits actually on circuit switching also we have the predefined path so this is what the mpls is trying to impose and mpls is a connection oriented technology so ip was the connectionless technology while mpls is the connection oriented technology so with the use of this mpls we can speed up the forwarding of this packets or we can say flow and because of that we can achieve the quality of service parameters however in mpls the routes or we can say route can be changed based on this flow by flow also so let us look at this uh, about this multi protocol label switching so just i discuss the traditional ip uh, routing disadvantages and why do we need mpls so probably you are clear about why do we need mpls so initially mpls was used as a technique to increase the packet forwarding speed of the router so this was the same example which earlier i have given you so that was what about to increase the packet forwarding speed of the routers but nowadays it has been developed as a standard technology that presents new dimension to the large ip based internet networks mpls also enables us to use not only tcp ip routing protocols 
but also the routing protocols of any other stack. So this is another interesting characteristic of the MPLS. MPLS is a framework which does not cover only IP networks, but also it covers the many other backbone networks like ATM and uh, frame relay kinds of networks. Like see, ATM has its own routing mechanism, but MPLS is a uh, one bigger umbrella which can support all such kinds of networks. So traditional IP routing, just very initially I talked at what a normal router does. So that are all the points are listed here. OSPF is a very well known and open shortest path protocol to populate the routing table. Always the biggest problem is that routing table becomes very large. So the route lookup based on IP address uh, takes more time. So this is a very important point. And then find the next router to which the packet has to be sent. Uh, replace the layer 2 address. This normally happens when the uh, end router is reached because after that the router has to deliver this uh, IP datagram packet to the inside the uh, local area network or like that. At that time it would require layer 2 address or you can say MAC address. So each router performs this task. Every router takes a certain considerable amount of time but when you think about the 10 hopes it is crossing that means uh, one router time multiplied by 10 so that would be something considerable amount of time so how can we uh, get rid of, of uh, this uh, time so this is another uh, same example of this IP routing how does it happen already I have explained so that is what the uh, things this uh, how this path gets traversed and what is the mechanism behind that that is the routing <coughs> if you look at this uh, this diagram shows the packet uh, transmission mechanism along with the routing table. So if you look at, uh, just focus on this routing table which is in the center and uh, the reason I am interested because this is the router which is connected to three different networks and, the, and that's why it is having three uh, interfaces. So if you look at the routing table of this router then uh, the incoming line this is 125.50 okay and uh, which is coming from path 0 that is output interface path 0 and this is where incoming is 1 that is actually 145.41 so that is what this uh, is uh, uh, this uh, output interface 1 and this is input interface uh, that is one so router is, and this is output interface uh, about this router so again just uh, referring disadvantages of the ip network and that's why we are moving to the uh, multi protocol level switching header analysis is performed at each hope okay so every router has to look at the header inside the header it will look at the destination address inside the destination address again it will look at the network address that is by doing the masking and then finding the output interface and, uh, and then forwarding that uh, on the output interface increase demand on routers utilizes the best available path okay that is what the routing mechanism some congested links and some underutilized links so this is the nature problem in internet some of the routers are getting congested while some of the routers are not that much uh, utilized. So what happens when such congestion happens? So degradation of the throughput. So network efficiency uh, uh, starts decaying. Uh, longer delays because traffic is uh, getting congested. So longer delays and eventually when your delays are uh, being longer. So uh, it would the uh, router starts dropping the packets and that would eventually uh, turn out to be a loss. No QS no service differentiation not possible with connection less protocol so this is what the major because ip is a connection less so that's what we have uh, already discussed <coughs> so need for mpls why there has been need for the mpls see earlier this was uh, working fine because as uh, but as soon as the internet has grown rapidly and geographically spanning so because of the rapid growth of the internet latency dependent application video conferencing and latency dependent response time is not tolerable so all these applications demand large amount of traffic should be forwarded in rapid manner so quality of service less time at the router so router must forward the packets immediately rather than to have the 
to deal with the longer queues. So that was an important word. That's what we call traffic engineering. So flexibility in routing packet instead of changing route on packet basis with MPLS routes are change on flow by flow basis. So this is very important point for you. Connection oriented forwarding techniques. Okay, so this is what the interesting paradigm. Now I think you are you will be able to correlate, just like packet switching, which was on uh, uh, routes uh, are based on packets. While in circuit switching, we have studied that uh, fixed path is established between the source and destination. So here, this is the connection oriented mechanism, and it is a forwarding mechanism. So there is an interesting part. Not forward. Uh, this is forwarding mechanism. This is different than the word routing. Routing does forwarding, but before forwarding, it does the masking, uh, looking in the routing table, and then it does forwarding. But can we have the mechanism through which we can directly forward the packet without looking at inside the IP header or without looking the IP header? And that's what exactly MPLS is trying to offer us. So utilize the IP header information <coughs> and uh, decides on the path of packet. Uh, decides the uh, decides on the path of uh, packets. Okay, uh, this is what uh, based on. So what exactly MPLS uh, uh, does? So MPLS provides one mechanism called labels. That's what we are coming here. So multi protocol. We have seen label switching in IP networks. The most important thing for us was the routing, but here we are removing the need of routing instead we are moving to the concept of switching switching is a basically layer two task and routing is a basically layer three task so that is happening at the network level and switching is normally happening at the data level so supports multi protocol because supports protocols even other than ip so that's why it is called multi protocol ip version 4 ip version 6 ipx uh, supports ethernet token ring FDDI, ATM, frame relay, point to point protocol, at link layer, and all. Labels. Short fix length identifier to determine a route. And labels are added to the top of the IP packet. Actually, at the top of the IP packet, but actually, we will see in detail when actually this labels is uh, sandwiched between the layer 2 and layer 3. At layer 3, we have IP header, and layer 2, we have some data link layer protocol. The header or something called uh, ATM header, ATM cell header. So ATM cell header is nothing but it is at the layer two, and IP layer, IP header that is at layer three, and in between this label is uh, stuffed. So that means sometimes th that's why this MPL is also called layer 2.5 protocol. So that is that sits between layer two and layer three. So labels are assigned when the packet enters the MPLS domain. So this is important word. Again, MPLS domain. Why? Because this is something different network where the routers are called also MPLS enabled router. Normal routers and MPLS enabled routers. So that we will see. Switching, forwarding a packet. So this is important word switching. This is not routing, this is switching. So just simply forwarding a packet. So what is that? Packets are forwarded based on the label. So whenever packet arrives in MPLS domain, the MPLS enabled routers would not look for the layer 3 header. That means would not go in finding the IP header and would not look into the destination address of the IP header. Instead, it would just see the header that is before IP header. That is the uh, this label has been stuffed inside that packet or PDU protocol data unit. And it would just see the label and looking at the label. Now there is no uh, uh, need of doing any masking or like this. So it would look at the label and based on label simply it will forward the packet. So not on the basis of IP header information. So this would ultimately deliver or we can say this would ultimately forward the packet in faster manner. And that is what the biggest advantage because of the growth of the internet. This was the need. And this is how the MPLS supports in doing this task. Thank you for listening this video.